The Pirate Bed by Jeremy Strong Chapter 1 The Bed The bed. It was a very strange bed. Jenna's father had found it at the back of an old junk shop. It was almost hidden by ancient tennis rockets and dusty pictures. When the shop owner cleared them away, Mr. Lockhart could see at once that it was just what they had been searching for. Ever since Jenna's old one had broken, he had been looking for a cheap, narrow bed to fit her thin, long room. There were not many ways of arranging the furniture without bumping into it. Jenny always had bruises on her legs. Mr. Lockhart thought the new bed was just the right size, even if it did look a bit odd. Jenny's parents struggled up the stairs with it while she followed. It's a bit weird, she said. I know, agreed that. But as soon as I saw it, I knew it was the kind of bed you'd like. I thought... Jenny's weird too. She's bound to like this one. Thanks very much, Dad. Jenny grinned and pushed a few curls of vivid red hair from her eyes. Her parents staggered round the top of the stairs and finally managed to squeeze through the doorway into Jenny's bedroom. She had already cleared the space and it did not take long to push the bed snugly against one wall. Everyone stepped back and gazed at it. Isn't it tall? Mom said. I've never seen a bed like it in my life. Her husband leaned forward and ran one hand along the wooden frame. I think it's pretty old. The shopkeeper said he thought it may have come from a ship. I suppose the high sides is stop sailors falling out of bed in a storm. Jenny held the sides of her new bed and smiled. It was the best bed she had ever seen. Her father was still pointing things out. The man in the shop said he'd been told there was some kind of secret cupboard, but he had never found it. I think there are some carvings underneath. In a flash, Jenny was crawling under the bed. Her eyes had just got used to the dark when a strange feeling swept over her. It was almost as if she was in two places at once. It felt weird. If she looked out, she could see her mother's feet in her silly slippers with the blue pom-poms. Her parents' voices sounded like a TV program heard through next door's wall. Jenny turned her head to look at the scratchings in the wood. There were mostly initials. On one plank, there were several drawings of old ships with full sails carved into the wood. Jenny traced them with a finger. She could almost hear the crash of water against the bows. A shiver ran up her spine. She poked her head out into the daylight. What do you think? asked mom. We know you wanted a new bed, but money's a bit short and... I know it's a bit odd, apologized dad. Jenny bimmed up at her parents. It's wonderful. The old wood is really nice. I bet hundreds of sailors have slept in it. Not all at the same time, I dare say, laughed mom. Anyhow, I'm glad you like it. I have to admit it is unusual. You can put the sheets on, can't you? We'll leave you to it. Jenny waited until they had left the room. She quietly shut her bedroom door and looked back at her strange bed. The sheets would have to wait. There were more important things to be done. She wriggled back beneath the bed. How could she find that secret cupboard? Jenny lay on her back in the darkness, staring into the gloom. At first, all seemed silent and still, but after a minute or two, she began to hear the faintest sounds. A creaking murmur came and went rising and falling. Jenny thought for a second that the floor moved beneath her, but surely that was impossible. Most of all, there was a strong feeling that the bed was trying to tell her something. At odd moments, she was sure she heard voices. In that eerie darkness, she sensed danger and excitement. 
A gust of salty wind suddenly blew across her face, and she panicked. She scrambled out into her bedroom. Her heart was pounding. She put a hand to her cheek where the wind had touched it. She looked at her bedroom window, but it was firmly shut. Jenny stared at the bed. There was certainly something very odd about it. If it felt strange when she was under the bed, what would it be like to slip in? Chapter 2 Nighttime It was ages before Jenny fell asleep. Maybe it was because she was expecting something, hoping for something. She turned over and over, trying to get comfortable. Her pillows felt like wooden boxes. Her duvet coiled itself round her feet like a soft octopus. At last, sleep did come. It came like white clouds that build slowly in the sky, growing larger and larger taking out more and more of the daylight. With the clouds came white spots that seemed to swoop across the insides of her eyelids. They were there when her eyes were shut. If she sleepily opened her eyes, they vanished at once. Closing her eyes brought them back, swooping and rising, thin triangles of white, like gulls. There was a tang in the air. The old bed rocked Jenny to sleep lulling her with the sound of waves lopping at a ship. The wind filled the great gray sails. Spray flew from the plunging bow and whipped across the deck, scattering the sunlight like flung diamonds. The gulls followed for a long time, keeping up with the ship, hardly moving their wings. Jenny watched them rise and fall in the sky until they gradually fly back, turning for home. The ship was out of sight of land. Jenny shut her cabin door and went up the wooden steps to the main deck. Sweaty men were running backwards and forwards. Everyone seemed busy. Some were hauling on ropes. Some were climbing the rigging. Jenny watched with astonishment, but before she even had time to think, a gruff shout in her ear made her jump. Oh, you! Get to work, you lazy little stinker, before I fry your liver. Jenny found herself staring into a huge, birded, blotchy face. Come on, shake a leg and get up that rigging. Jenny didn't need telling twice. She scrambled up the thick rope ladder to help with the sails. She was trying so hard to make it look as if she knew what she was doing that she did not even have time to think about where she was. When at last the heavy canvas puffed out with wind, Jenny gazed round. Nothing but sea! The boat heaved and rolled. The sailors got on with their tasks. Up on the quarterdeck stood a giant of a man, naked to the waist. He was gripping the handles of the big wheel with fists the size of melons. Next to him was a slim, wiry woman. She was leaning over the rail and watching the crew at work. She had a constant, slightly cruel smile. Her hair was a flaming red mass of curls. The sea wind caught and tossed the long strands so that they seemed to writhe about her head as if they were alive. At that moment, the woman looked up and saw Jenny. Her smile froze. She straightened up quickly. The alarm clattered beside her bed. Jenny sat up rock-like, breathing fast. She looked around, expecting to see the ship's crew at work. No, there was nothing but her bedroom. She turned off the alarm and felt the smooth, dark wood of her bed. Slowly, she got up and put on her slippers. Wow! She murmured to herself. Sleep well? asked Mrs. Lockhart when Jenny went downstairs. Brilliant! I've been at sea all night! Her mother smiled and set the table for breakfast. Jenny sat there dreamily, her head filled with memories of her night at sea. Was it a dream or had it really happened? Jenny! Mom cried. 
You're slopping your cereal down your chin. Your thoughts must have been miles away. Wipe your face quickly now. It's almost time for school. Don't forget your packed lunch. Jenny's thoughts were brought back to earth with a bang. School. She had to go to school. She picked up her lunch box and set off up the road. Halfway there, her feet began to drag. She was scared. What would happen today? What new misery would spoil everything yet again? Hey, it's Ketchup Head, shouted Vicky, running across the playground with her two friends close behind. Vicky patted Jenny's flame red hair. Ketchup Head, she repeated. You don't mind being called that, do you? Of course not. It's an excellent name. Jenny tried to back away, but Sharon grabbed her elbow. No, don't go away. We're your friends. Yeah, friends, muttered Claire. Sharon grinned at the others. What have you got for lunch? Something tasty? Jenny held tightly onto her lunchbox. I don't know. I haven't looked. Oh, squealed Vicky. Ketchup Head hasn't looked. Never mind, we're your friends, so we'll look for you. Sharon tore the lunchbox from Jenny's fingers. Hey, give that back! It's my lunch, started Jenny. Keep your hair on, Vic said with a smirk. We'll look after it for you, won't we? Oh, look, a chocolate bar. You don't want that getting into the wrong hands, do you? Vicky slipped it into her own pocket. Crisps! cried Sharon. Isn't it nice to share things with your friends? She took out the apple that Jenny's mom had packed and handed it to Claire. Sharon snapped the box shut and tossed it back to Jenny, whose face was absolutely white. Jenny clenched her hands into tight fists, but she couldn't use them. Her eyes were full of tears that she fought to keep back. Sharon pressed Jenny back against the wall and smiled very sweetly at her. Don't forget, we're your friends, she hissed. We look after you, added Vicky. Without us, something nasty might happen, especially if you tell anyone. The gang started to move away. Oh, thanks for the lunch, shouted Sharon, and they ran off giggling to the other end of the playground. Jenny shut her eyes as tightly as she could. A single tear appeared on her left cheek. She quickly brushed it away. Chapter 3. Prepare for Battle How was school? asked mom when Jenny got home. Jenny carried her lunchbox through the kitchen and slid it quietly onto the side. Okay. That's what you say every day. I never know what's happening these days. Is everything all right? It's okay, insisted Jenny. She quickly went and sat in front of the television and turned the sound up. Her mother sighed and gave up asking much to Jenny's relief. She stared at the screen, but her thoughts were miles away at sea. The actors on television might just as well have been speaking Russian. Jenny wasn't listening or looking. She was thinking about the look on that woman's face as their eyes met. There had been a flash of something, almost as if they recognized each other. How could that be? Everything had happened in such a rush. One moment she had been at sea, and then her alarm clock went off. Whole hours seemed like minutes, or was it the other way round? Then there was Jenny's other problem. School. Her mind filled with a deep, gray despair. She didn't know how to handle it. At one time, Claire had been Jenny's best friend, but the other two, Sharon and Vicky, had stolen her away. Sharon and Vicky had a habit of steering things at school. The other children did not like them for it. Over the last couple of weeks, all three of them had taken to calling Jenny Ketchup Head because of her thick, flame-red curls. There were times when Jenny hated her hair, 
The trio made a point of pestering her. They bumped into her, they hid her books and broke her pencils. Jenny didn't know why they did these things and she never told anyone. This just made the problem worse. But Jenny didn't want to get Claire into trouble. It hurt to see her old friend mixed up with Vicky and Sharon. Mrs. Lockhart called her for tea. She was very hungry, having had most of her lunch stolen, and she did feel much better after eating. She went to bed hoping that tomorrow would be a better day. Maybe Claire would feel guilty and want to be her friend again. Maybe nothing would happen. Meanwhile, she had her new bed to look forward to. Where would Jenny be tonight? The moment she entered her bedroom, she was in a different world. She stood by the door for several seconds, trying to place where she was. She could feel the door frame with one hand. She could see her clothes scattered across the floor, but her room was filled with a stiff sea breeze. Distant, urgent noises filled her ears, and at the back of her bedroom, she was sure she could see the heaving ocean. Jenny hurried to her bed as the floor pitched and rolled beneath her unsteady feet. She sat upright, clutching the covers. Large waves hammered on the side of the creaking ship. The wind drove against the great hull, making it tilt to one side. Jenny was startled by a thunderous knocking on her cabin door. It burst open. A green bearded sailor waved a pistol at her. Come on, young monkey, he bellowed. It's no good hiding in bed. Captain Skull will skin you alive. Up on deck and quick about it, before Snake Hair sees you and has you whipped. The sailor vanished up the steps, leaving Jenny wondering who these people were. Captain Skull? Snake Hair? Why were they after her? Jenny slipped from the bed and followed the sailor up to the main deck. What chaos! The crew charged about rolling back cannons and loading them. Gun ports were thrown open. Piles of weapons appeared on the deck. The crew stared across the port side. A second ship was bearing down on them under full sail. A sharp cry came from the quarter deck. Jenny looked round and there was the woman with flaming hair, slashing the air with a sword and roaring commands at her crew. Raise the flag! Tar back, fetch my pistol! More sail aloft! She ran to the port side and cursed violently. Then she saw Jenny. Her eyes flushed as she tossed back her writhing red curls. A smile, half cruel, came and went. Don't stand there like a cow waiting to be milked, Jenny. Here, catch! Snake hair snatched up a sword and threw it down. Much to Jenny's surprise, she caught it without even thinking. It was as easy as picking up a table knife. The enemy ship was much closer. Jenny could see the men on board arming themselves for battle. Her heart jumped as she spatted a skull and crossbones fluttering from the main mast. Pirates! Automatically, she glanced up at her own ship's flag, and this time her heart almost fell out of her mouth. Another skull crossed bones, so they were pirates too. Jenny gripped her sword. The entire ship shook from stern to stern as the cannons thundered. Black and gray smoke drifted across the deck. A stand by to board ship, yelled Snake Hair above the mountain din. She was halfway up the rigging, spyglass to one eye. It's Captain Skull, all right, lads, him and his scurvy mob of yellow bellies. They'll be after our treasure, give them no quarter. It's to the death, man, to the death. Snake Hair grinned wildly and leaped lightly down to the deck. The two ships were almost touching, and Jenny could see the tense, fierce faces of the enemy. The ships seemed to lurch away from each other for a few seconds, then there was a great grinding and splintering as they crashed together.
A mighty roar of voices exploded from both ships as the pirates flung themselves upon each other. A real ringing burst into Jenny's ears. She sat upright, panting and sweating. She stared blankly around her bedroom while the ringing went on and on. Jenny blinked and rubbed her eyes. Her heart was still pounding. She reached out and switched off the alarm. Silence filled the room. It was half past seven. Time to get up. She must have been at sea all night. Chapter 4 Close Encounters Oh, look! cried Vicky, barring Jenny's path. Lunch has arrived. Jenny paled and her heart began to race. She glanced behind to see if she could escape that way, but Sharon quickly slipped behind her. Too slow, <laughs> laughed Sharon, then leaned forward and whispered menacingly into Jenny's ear. There's no escape. Vicky took charge. So what have you got today, then? It had better be something good. Hand it over. Jenny clutched her lunchbox close to her chest. Her face was tight and drawn. Vicky stepped forward. I said, hand it over, ketchup head. Sharon suddenly grabbed Jenny's arms and pinned them to her sides. Jenny looked hopefully at Claire, but her ex-friend just stood biting her lower lip. Vicky grinned and took the lunchbox from Jenny's hands. Thank you so much, she mocked. You're so kind. Oh, look cheese sandwiches and crisps oh dear be flavor vicky glared at jenny i thought we told you to get cheese and onion it had better be cheese and onion next time or it will be the gangplank for you still this will do ta very much the girls walked off hey cried jenny you've still got my lunch box yeah nice isn't it laughed Sharon and the three girls disappeared round the corner. By the end of the afternoon, the box was still missing. Jenny did not dare ask again. She went home without it and, of course, it was the first thing that her mother noticed. I left it at school, mumbled Jenny. Mom sighed. You'll have to have a poly bag tomorrow. You haven't lost it, have you? No! Mrs. Lockhart glanced at her daughter in surprise, then shrugged and went back to the garden to finish the pruning. All evening, Jenny was jumpy. Her father and mother both noticed. They kept glancing at each other and trying to prompt Jenny into talking, but Jenny was silent. What on earth was she supposed to say? How about, well, you see, Dad, the problem is I've got all these pirates in my bedroom fighting each other. Dad would just laugh then, and Jenny didn't think she could bear that. At last, she went upstairs. She paused outside her bedroom door. She counted to ten, took a deep breath, and opened the door. Choking smoke filled her lungs, and the strong, exciting smell of exploded gunpowder made her heart beat faster. A brawny sailor banged against her as he ran past. The smoke drifted slowly on the wind. Jenny glanced up at the quarterdeck. A tremendous battle was taking place. Flashing swords clashed in the air. Snake hair was fighting for her life, cornered by three roaring pirates. One of them was obviously Captain Skull, for he was tall and gaunt, and the skin on his face was drawn tightly over his bones. A long scar ran down one cheek. Snake hair cried out as a thin blade opened a wound on her leg. Jenny didn't waste any time. Snatching up a sword, she rushed up the steps and dashed forward, throwing herself upon the gang. 
Snake Hair was too busy to cast Jenny more than a glance, but her eyes sparked as she saw Jenny fly to her rescue. One of the pirates gave a curse and turned. His sword blade swung across Jenny's face. She took a quick step back, then darted forward, her own blade cutting the air and driving the sweating giant back. Now he was struggling to stop Jenny's advance. Back he went, cursing at every step, until he was stopped by the railings. He could go back no farther. Jenny drove forward with her sword. The pirate gave a terrified yell, plunged over the railings, and hit the sea with a resounding smack. <coughs> Snake Hair was in deep trouble. Even though Jenny had rid her of one attacker, the other two were crowding in on her. Snake Hair was a superb swordswoman, but she was slowly being driven into a corner from where there was no escape. She managed to spare one pirate's arm, but at that same moment, Captain Skull leaped forward and grabbed her, seizing her sword and fling it away. Jenny was just in time to see the enemy captain dragging Snake Hair away. All around her, a frenzy of fighting went on. Jenny pushed her way through the struggling bodies, trying to reach the snake hair, but Captain Skull had already forced her down below. Nobody else seemed to have noticed. Jenny realized that she was the only person who could save snake hair now. She gripped her sword and slipped quietly down the steps and into the gloomy passageway to the cabins.